get him up. Let him get up. Let him get up. Let him get up. Hey, it's Ali. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Happy Pride Month to whatever they got going on. Lego Monkey Kid is back, kinda, for their fourth season special, which I didn't know was a thing before. Shout out to y'all for letting me know because I was really like, oh damn, season four really ended on a cliffhanger like that? Like, damn. And I didn't even know if we were getting a season five because like it ended, but it, it didn't end, but it ended. But then y'all let me know that there is usually a special that comes out just because I've usually been like pretty late on all of these. This is the first season I've watched as it comes out. So I've been pretty late to like seasons one through three but i'm here now and that's all that matters so in case you didn't know like me or you just missed it there is a season four basically a finale a four-part episode finale so where we left off with season four azure lion has become the jade emperor he has technically won mk is avoiding his feelings and sun wukong is nowhere to be found again so for this i went episode by episode wrote my notes it took me four hours to watch this special i'm not i wish i was joking when i tell you i kept pausing every five seconds don't even do it don't even do it she's in baby jail when i tell you i kept pausing every five seconds because something new would happen and i would need like five minutes to process it i would need actually five minutes to process everything that was going on so if at any time you like this video please give it a like and subscribe because i make videos like this all the time and i probably most likely we'll do another video talking about the actual plot of the show maybe a theory video maybe an analyzation video of like the villains or antagonists rather in this case because i actually do really want to talk about azure lion i'll talk about him a little bit in this video but i really want to do like i really want to get in deep with him so if you want to see that let me know down in the comments below let me know what you thought about the special your favorite parts <clears throat> Mm -hmm, your favorite parts mm -hmm. and let's just jump into it so episode one picks up right where the season left off and mk wants to go find sun wukong now everyone is like pretty tepid about this because at this point at this point it is worth noting that everyone feels very lukewarm about him and at this point also <laughs> mk also feels very lukewarm about him what i love the most about mk and how much he has grown up until this point i think i said this in my last video it is pretty clear that mk kind kind of knows that something is wrong and that you could this makes me actually want to go back and rewatch the entire show from the beginning because I feel like there are little hints along the way to show that MK kind of knows that something like isn't right here like the entire idea of him not knowing where he comes from or his backstory or anything like that and he just appeared one day like that that whole thing and all everything with the shadiness with Sun Wukong and everything I feel like he he knows and it's one of those things where everybody knows that he knows it's it's just a matter of like when he's going to choose to acknowledge it if he's going to choose to acknowledge it and whether or not obviously what that's going to do to his character I really love that I feel like that's where we are with his character right now and so the, him wanting to go save Sun Wukong everyone's just kind of like sure I, I got do we really and he's like he would do the same for us and then it immediately pans over not even pans over it's a smash cut to macaque and he's just like oh. he's like what he I, I, like i literally was like what he and then macaque's face said what he though and then macaque went with him and oh boy i love them i love their duo together i love them so much so on the day that i'm filming this this is father's day it is both father's day and pride month can you believe that this show really said happy pride month and happy father's day because almost immediately upon entering this dreamscape realm memory realm whatever the fuck it's called we get macaque talking about his misadventures with wukong at this point i'm like do they know? do they know i think there's i I have watched way too many shows at this point to just really sit here and be like, there's no way they don't know, right? There's no way you don't know. Because every episode, every single episode starts with Macaque saying something and me going, LGBT, LGBT, L mm, LGBT, the G and LGBT, hmm? I'll know the real Wukong when we find him. I can smell him a mile away. Now, what does that mean? Huh? Huh? Also, I thought that Macaque collecting the little baby monkeys was really cute. Like, they were really attached to him, which, if anything else, just explains the even more deep lore that Macaque and Sun Wukong have together. Because those monkeys live on Sun Wukong's mountain. And if they know him that well, that they're, like, friendly towards him. Gay. Gay. 
homosexual, gay. What I also really liked about this episode, you know, aside from the LGBT, was the fact that we actually get to see Wu Kong through Macaque's eyes. And in this case, it is like the downfall of Sun Wu Kong, for instance. And it's really interesting because at this point, you you could so argue that <laughs> Now, Sun Wukong has done a lot more harm than Macaque has, like, ever done. Like, realistically, you could argue that. And so, at this point, it's like seeing seeing Sun Wukong through Macaque's eyes. Is, first of all, that's depressing. The angst, the amount of angst. Oh, my God. But he really sees him as, if you look at it through that lens, this episode through that lens, you can see how Macaque sees Sun Wukong as, like, oh, my God, he's, like, doing these really cool things, and he's taking me along with him. Like, oh, this is so fun, and whatever, and, like, we have we have a little dynamic going on and like whatever until like slowly he's like he keeps wanting power and all of this stuff because he wants his friends to be okay and whatever which of course you can of course parallel that to mk at this point because mk is just like i just want my friends to be cool i just want all of us to be cool i want all of us to have fun i just want to chill i just want to vibe i was put on this earth to vibe and I am forced to save it. So yeah, seeing Wu Kong through this lens has really set, like, solidified how much Macaque sees Wu Kong in MK and how much he's trying to like divert him onto a better path than the one that Sun Wu Kong went down. Because obviously Sun Wu Kong had good intentions. The intentions of becoming immortal and all that stuff was to protect his friends. At least that is the version that they are going with for this story. So to see that, you can see the direct parallels between Sun Wu kong and mk in this instance and macaque is like absolutely not not again we're gonna stop it right here right now and even through this first episode you could tell there's still so much more going on between macaque and sun wukong which like <laughs> Girl. through macaque's eyes because at this point you could argue that macaque knows sun wukong better than like anybody at this point um we get to see sun wukong for what he truly is and who he truly was during that time which like you know very punchable not very likable guy you know not the great sage he's gotta drag everyone else into his mess you're not in this mess you're still free everything i did was for us you did it for yourself Gay, 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 gay. MK is really like sitting there, like, what, what is going on with my two divorced dads right now? Like, I knew y'all had history, but damn, I didn't know y'all had that much history. But the episode eventually ends, and we get to see MK have this heart to heart with Sun Wukong, and basically telling him and us, the audience, despite the fact that MK has gone through so much growth, it almost seems like MK has surpassed Sun Wukong in that manner, but like, clearly he's not ready to not have a mentor, which he like outright says to Sun Wukong, which is great because we get to see more of that. Sun Wukong still has more to offer to MK as a mentor, despite the fact that like we are now coming face to face with a lot of the misdeeds and the not so great stuff that Sun Wukong has done. MK understands that and he still sees Sun Wukong as his mentor. And then Sun Wukong looks over to Macaque for like reassurance. This whole scene, this whole episode really had me like, happy pride month girlies. So episode two, <laughs> episode two, 48 seconds in, and we're already getting some Sun Wukong and Macaque. Like y'all are eating today. Like I know y'all eat normally on a regular basis with the show, but y'all are really eating. This special had y'all feasting. Okay, y'all were eating. It's also at this point that I'm like, I really want to know what the Brotherhood thought of like Macaque and Sun Wukong's relationship. Like even obviously like, in the show it's not canon but like just their friendship in general because also at this point you can tell that macaque doesn't really belong there he is physically like outside of like everybody else at this point he also is like really struggling to like fit in i guess at, the, at this point like just the way that he was struggling with his uniform and everything and like sun wukong was trying to help him i hope i hope i hope Oh, I hope we get more about that specifically. I hope we're not done with the Brotherhood because I really, there's so much there. There is so much there that I we, we need to unpack. We really need to unpack it because I can see how that is kind of the start of like this fissure between like MK and Macaque and how Macaque is known to be like, sorry, I said MK, I meant Sun Wukong. The fissure between Sun Wukong and uh, Macaque and that how he started to get to be known as kind of his shadow and kind of just following him along wherever he went. I can totally see how that is like the beginning of that. Oh girl, 
<laughs> oh girl <laughs> the drama the angst we are speed running friends to lovers to enemies to lovers again <laughs> we are speed running that speaking of pride month Pang uses they them pronouns throughout the entire season they 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 refer to Pang with they them pronouns I, I literally I really had to stop it and I rewind that part about three times because I was like there's no way I just heard that right there's no way I was like interesting and then they did it again in the last episode gagged gagged but someone on twitter said it correctly of course they would make the character who's like the most hated <laughs> the most hated character the most insufferable fucking character i'm sorry to all you paying like lovers out there who that's your favorite character bro but like i i said this in my last video i never trust a bird character a day in my life but also bird characters are notoriously lgbt like let's be honest here notoriously so it, it makes sense but also fuck you paying <laughs> like for real <laughs> like fuck you for real and then may literally like confirms exactly what i had said in that episode i was like yeah mm -hmm. me and may are literally the same person i don't kin characters but if i did me and may are literally the same fucking person also this entire episode where they're like making their little plan is so fucking cute it's so cute oh my god with with sun wukong making the plan and everything and i would like to say this is skipping ahead a little bit sun wukong talking about the brotherhood and talking about how each one of them and their weaknesses and their strengths and everything and he got them exactly on the nose more angst coming your way because think about it for a second he spent so much time with these people and considers them like actual fucking family and that he knows so much about them like it's not like he is like making the stuff up about them and then out of his arrogance and then out of his hubris it doesn't work in the end it does work they like he knows so much about each and every single one of them that he is able to effectively fight against them and effectively give other people orders like oh when you fight Pang, know that they're really like self-preserving and they will like leave they'll leave if it gets rough so like just keep like pelting on them and that is exactly what happens everything that he says that's going to happen is exactly what happens and that's just it makes me so sad because it's like oh dude, this was his like actual family he knows them he like really does actually know them and cares about them that, that oh my god give me a second <laughs> and then pigsy dad of the year happy father's day to pigsy too because he is hyping up mk and he's like you actually do make a lot of really good plans you do like that is your thing <laughs> that's his son <laughs> bro and then of course mk once again suppressing his feelings oh and we're, oh we're gonna get that boy some therapy we are gonna get that boy some therapy. But plot twist, the episode ends with the Azure Lion and his brotherhood coming to him. And he is also, side note, falling apart at the scenes because he cannot contain the Jade Emperor's power. It's just so much power that he literally cannot contain it. So I'm starting to sense a theme here. Like I said before, every episode so far has started with a little antidote about it, Macaque and Sun Wukong's relationship. Is there anything Wukong could do that would break his hold over you? Hello? Now, Peng, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why? Now, why would you say that? <laughs> because they're not wrong. They literally aren't wrong. And that is why I sincerely hope, I'm not just saying this for the shits and the giggles and the gags and the memes of like, oh, and the ship, because I do love this ship. I think it's a really good ship. It's a great ship, even practically canon at this point, but not even for the sake of the ship, but just for the sake of like, what is going on like between you two, like genuinely, I really hope in the next season we get a deep dive. I want like a full flashback episode because girly what? And remember how I said earlier about how I wanted to know about like what the brotherhood thought of their relationship. Well, now we get to know. Like you are literally just following uh, Wukong into into anything, into anything. Still to this day, you are still doing that, despite the fact that you know all of the shit that he has done to you. Which like we need some retribution on that as well, because as much as we all, I like at this point, I'm MK at this point, rooting for Sun Wukong and his like redemption. I really am. But that does not erase all of the shit that you have done, including to the people that you care about. Mr. Oh, I did all this for us. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Like that does not excuse the pain that you caused to Macaque. 
and may honestly made Macaque the way that he is now. So as much as we hate Pang, you know, as much as we all collectively hate them, you you can't deny that they were right when they said that. It's like you, uh, this man has a grip on you. <laughs> they really said, get a grip, get a grip, because Sun Wukong has a grip on you. Like it is tight. That's your man. <laughs> Also, Demon Bull King crumbs, crumbs, y'all. <laughs> Demon Bull King family enthusiasts. I am so sorry. We got literally, when I say crumbs, I really do mean crumbs. No speaking lines, no nothing this season. We really did get fucking crumbs. Oh my God, please. Next season, I am on my knees begging. <laughs> I miss my other son. I miss Red Son. I miss the Demon Bull King family. Please. Now at this point, Azure Lion says something quite peculiar, which I wish we could had the time to go further in depth. But at this point, it would have been taken up an entire another season. He said, if you're not going to kneel before your emperor and like all this blah, 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 tuck, tuck, tuck. What do you mean? Are you not going to kneel before your emperor? Wasn't the whole point of you becoming emperor to abolish that whole system in the first place? Where, where, didn't you say that the system was heavily flawed and people have suffered under the Jade Emperor's rule? And so you taking his power was trying to strip all of that system away. And now you're sitting here like, I am the emperor now. Kneel before me. Huh? I wish we had more time. I really do wish we had more time to go into that. Because what? Mm -mm. That was a line that Manny really made me go pause, pause. Hold on, I thought you became the Jade Emperor to stop like all of this, to stop the whole hierarchy shit and people suffering needlessly. It is again at this point that I am so happy that I called my first uh, video that I did of this show the coolest show you've never heard of because this show is so unironically cool. This is a show that was literally made to push toy sales. And let me tell you, it's working. I really came into the show like, oh, I'm gonna watch it because you know some mutuals of mine on Instagram were really hyping it up. I'ma watch it, that's it. Like, I don't need to like get into it. I don't need to like buy any of the Lego sets. I haven't bought any of the Lego sets yet because I'm about to move, but I will. Uh, Legos are expensive. The advertising is working. Okay, like you are not immune to advertisements because I really, I really thought I was like, you know what? I'm into the show, but I'm never going to buy a set. I have that shit open on my tabs. I'm just waiting, waiting until I get settled down to where I'm going and I, oh, I'm going to snatch it up. I'm going to snatch it up. Maybe I'll wait till Black Friday, but I'm still snatch it up. The advertisement is working. The show is so unnecessarily cool. Like it doesn't need to be this cool. There's no reason why this show needs to be this cool. Like, you didn't have to go this hard on the animation, the characters, the writing. You you really didn't, but they did. And I'm just like, why? I really wish I could ask. They must have a... I know it's Lego, and Lego is a multi-billion dollar company. They must have the budget of, like, gods to really be like, yeah, no, we want animation on top. And there's no way that Lego is like, you need to do exactly this with the story. They probably were like, you need to sell these toys. Here is this IP that we have. Uh, make a show. Just go. And they were like, <laughs> Flybark Productions was just like rubbing their hands together like, oh boy, you don't even know. Because there's no reason. There's no reason why it needs to, oh, it goes this hard. Oh my God. All right, we're on to the last episode now. Uh, uh, <laughs> so at this point, the battle, the battles are in full swing, full swing. Also, C crew. I hate to call them the C crew, but they really were C crew this season. Uh, Pigsy. This is always what happens when you have a lot of like characters. One Piece goes through this too, where it's like every season there is usually like an A team, a B team, and then a C team. And usually the C team gets the least amount of screen time, the least amount of character development and stuff, which is fine because there's just so many characters to get through and there's so many things to talk about. It is fine that Pigsy and Tang and crew all like take a backseat and Sandy all take a backseat this season. That is totally fine. Even May also took a backseat this season, but I just said she's a part of B crew because she was with Macaque and her and Macaque's dynamic, they're my kid. Oh. Oh my god, their dynamic together is so cute. I, I, I need more of their, I need more of them. When your two favorite characters interact and it's the best thing ever, literally May and McCag are like my two favorite characters in the show and having them interact together, I, mm. whoever said, thought of that, oh, best idea ever. Azure Lion is such a good character. Oh my god. Like I really, in the fourth season, I was really sitting there like, damn, he kind of spit. He kind of spitting right now. He kind of spitting. And I'm so sad. I really hope that we get to see more of him because it is just, it is so heartbreaking. Like right at the end that he's just like, I like, 
really was trying to do good. Like he was really trying to do good the entire time and went about it in a completely like wrong way. And this also just goes to show that even 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 after even after <laughs> Azure Lion basically kills the Jane Emperor, gets all of the power, and is tearing apart the fabric of the universe, Sun Wukong still like is like he basically has done worse. Not completely crazy worse, but like in terms of the effects that he has had on people, Sun Wukong is still at the top. And that is why it is so like after all of this, Sun Wukong is still at the center. Like, brother, what did you do? <laughs> What, what what didn't he do more like it but like still so yeah i don't know where azure lion went i hope he's cool i hope he's chilling I, I i don't know but the part the plot twist right at the end to be like no wait how did you get out of the shadow realm though <laughs> how how did that happen because i didn't do it and all three of y'all were stuck in the shadow realm so who let you out and he's just like i don't fucking know <laughs> and, which is so interesting to me because just like MK has been ignoring like everything that's going on inside of him and all of this stuff the Azure Lion also has low-key been doing that he's just like I don't know what happened but I've been given a second chance at life and I'm not gonna squander it we got things to do let's go and that is so interesting and you may be asking Allison you skipped over a huge part and don't worry we're about to get to it we're literally about to get to it but it's really interesting that that whole plot twist was I was like, who did let you out? And I was really like, please let it be the Lady Bone Demon. I don't even care if, she, if next season she is a minor character in the terms of the bigger role to play. I don't care. I miss her. She was such a good character. She was such a good villain. She is like number one villain right now, bro. Like, oh, Lady Bone Demon. Oh, I miss her so much. <laughs> All right. I literally... <laughs> MK going... I don't even chaos monkey i guess we could call it at this point him going chaos monkey mode oh my god bro i literally had to i literally had to get up and take a lap i had to get i knew it was coming but like they went hog wild with that shit i had to get up and take a lap first of all why his voice get deep like that <laughs> why his voice get deep like that and the fucking kaiju monkey oh my god oh my god like actually what <laughs> MK, oh, I want to see more of this. And he really, <laughs> the only thing I can think of is the entire time is this one meme. Let him get up, let him get up. Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. MK really is that guy. He really is that guy. Like, uh, he really is. He really is that guy. I don't, like, there's nothing else to say. He really is that guy. <laughs> also, I skipped over this, but MK and May's little outfits that they get right at the beginning of the fight. Like, they look so good. They look like little Power Rangers. They look so adorable. I love them. Those are my children. <laughs> They are my children. So that is the end of the special. We end and the Jade Emperor's power is trapped in a little tiny bubble that you know is not going to hold. You know it's not going to hold. And everything is fine for now, for like two seconds until it's not fine anymore. I hope that there's at least a little bit of a time skip before the next season because MK deserves some type of rest. Jesus Christ. He deserves some rest. Give the boy some rest. Damn. Also, the little sunscreen part was like so adorable. So cute. Also, so Pixie fretting over MK at the end. That's his fucking son, bro. Like, what? Every time there's a Pixie and MK interaction, I'm just like, that's his son. That's his biological son. Like, I don't, I don't make the rules. Also, I don't know if it was intentional or not. At this, like, at this point, I don't know if it was intentional, unintentional. What? Why is Macac dressed as Vegeta? Like, actually, I think down to the same color palette. Why is Macac dressed as Vegeta? Please, please, please. <laughs> please the beach episode the beach the beach crumb episode that we all been waiting for there's demon bull king family just i just i miss them so much and then lastly at the end 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 of the episode we get the shadow organization what shadow organization is doing what i don't know it looks like they are trying to bring about like actual chaos like true deep chaos so at this point it's going to be like order versus chaos which i oh Oh, one of my favorite tropes of just like all time. I love the whole order versus chaos shit. Mm, I love that shit. Let's get existential with it. Bring it on. Bring it on. Let's get existential with it. I am so hyped 
for season five. This was ooh, a nice wrap, a nice bow put together of the final season. I'm so glad too. It did a really good job, this special, of like cleaning up the Azure Line storyline because I was really like, are we just going to bring that into the next season? Wrapping that up, but still leaving so much more. So now we have another setup of the antagonist for the next season or the villains or the antagonist. There is a big difference between villain and antagonist, but like I think they're going to be straight up villains because they're just, you know, pure chaos, pure whatever. We have a nice setup for that for the next season. And then we still have MK's journey because he gave into the whole chaos monkey this time, but you could tell that he's still pretty afraid of it and he hasn't fully accepted it into himself. And I think that's what he has to do is that he's going to have to accept this part of himself as himself in order to fully be able to harness the power and, you know, get through his character development. So thank you so much for watching. If you watch all the way into the end, you are a real one. Uh, comment down below how you felt about this. If there's anything that you felt like I missed, I deadass might make a second video of this. So let me know. I really want to get into the Azure Lion as a character. And I really think I'm about to rewatch the whole show. And I might just talk about all of the antagonists and villains because they're so good. They're so good. This show goes so hard for no fucking reason let me know all of your thoughts down below and if you would like to reach me out on anything to talk about anything if there's like any informal stuff you want me to talk about you can catch me on tumblr and instagram i make lego monkey kid fan art it's like been it has been such an inspiration for me lately <laughs> uh, so i've been drawing fan art of that uh you can come catch me on twitter if you wanted to see my live tweets of me like watching the show that's where you'll find it on twitter uh and yeah is there anywhere else? TikTok. I make TikTok sometimes. That's about it. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Love and peace. Mm -hmm.